right, so one of the things I'll talk about at the very beginning is the whole strategy cycle. So you start off with a game, uh, whatever you're doing, you have to understand the landscape in order to learn climactic patterns which you need for anticipation. So that's all about observing the environment. Then you orientate yourself, and that's what doctrine's about, and then you decide where to attack, and that's uh, gameplay, and that's the leadership bit. And most people can't do any of this stuff anyway, so perfectly fine. We start there at the very, very basics. Um, and obviously, we'll mention about how maps are imperfect representations of a space, you know, so they, you know, don't try and create a perfect map. You can't, it, 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 but it doesn't matter. Even though maps are imperfect, they're still useful. And then I'll quickly talk about the difference between maps and graphs and why, you know, everything we call a map in business is back to graph. Uh, so, you know, mind maps, business process maps, systems maps, none of them are actually maps. They're all graphs, and, and because they're graphs, they're not actually useful for learning and challenging a landscape. So I'll mention that, and then I'll just quickly go on to the characteristics of what a map is. So that's the sort of stuff I'll do on the first day. The second day, what I'd like to do is, is go through an example, and I'll use events. So I just, because you mentioned it, I just quickly... There's quickly, the one. There's yeah, the I, one. I, the, I just took the slide. So I'll go from the point of view of <laughs> a user wants to go to an event and has a physical space, A, we know we've been able to uh, virtualize, uh, you know, uh, events for ages, but we haven't done so because of the whole social aspect, because you go to a virtual event, you don't get to meet people. So we've had inertia to change and our attitude of not wanting to change. Um, but we know at the same time that as things virtualize, new emerging practices will appear and new ways of doing things will appear. So it's all positive. But nonetheless, like any other industry, we've had that inertia. And we know if we make the jump, then capital will flow into these new areas. That's the whole creative destruction. And what's driving the change right now is, is this new need for an isolation economy in terms of physical isolation. It's not that you know, the technology wasn't there. It's not that we couldn't do this. It's just people were resisting. There'll be piano playing in the background. My son is learning uh, to play. And of course, if you're a business who sells physical space and events, well, you've got all the inertia to change. Well, that's point G, which is normal. Okay. So what we have is a whole bunch of businesses with pre-existing businesses and what they believe and this is, this is the bit that we need to talk about, is that at the end of the pandemic, we're just going to go back to how it was. We just have to survive, and then we'll go back. We'll go back to physical events, we'll go back to our pre-existing business model, and all the rest of it, won't it be great? And the answer is, that's probably never going to happen. What's going to happen is we're more likely... Um, to because of creating online events, what they're like to stick around. We've got the experience to do this. We've just had inertia. We'll be overcoming that. And at the same time, we're going to get this entire new world of new practices, new things we haven't thought about because we've industrialized the underlying space. So that's the exciting stuff. So that's the sort of stuff I'd want to talk about on the second day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. Right, super. I'll stop sharing. I can't describe it very well in the story. I have to show maps and then everybody can challenge the map, you see.